All right. We, uh, we welcome all of you to the BodyBuilt QP3 Ergo Systems Work From Home Webinar and Best Practices. I'm Mike Bartholomew, Director of Sales and Operations for BodyBuilt. I've been with the company for 16 years and uh, have, have seen a lot of different things. But what we're seeing right now is nothing like I'm sure any of us have seen. And I want to thank the over 300 of, uh, of the people attending from all over the United States today and hoping that you are healthy and safe. And we comprehend the tremendous impact COVID-19 has had on the workforce across all industries. As some employees are slowly returning to work, more individuals than ever are working from home. This may be the new normal. We are humbled to have the opportunity to work together with you in response to a new set of work from home needs and to ensure a safe environment during all phases of the work from home transition. BodyBuilt was established back in the early 1990s with the mission of designing and manufacturing cutting edge American made ergonomic products to assist people to work comfortably and productively within the new workplace environment, which was created by the advent of that desktop computer and the attendant transformation in the sedentary nation uh, of this new work environment. Since then, BodyBuilt uh, has continued to evolve as the leader in ergonomic technologies from seating to ergonomic accessories. Here we are 30 years later facing a new set of challenges, working safely from home and planning to return to work in a new safer setting. Our company lives by four core values, passion, integrity, commitment, and respect. It is our core value of passion to the quality of life of our customers uh, and employees that brings us and you together for this webinar today. At BodyBuilt, we hope uh, we have helped many companies and individuals transition from the workplace to working from home by offering sustainable work from home solutions. We've been asked and been provided uh, and have provided return to work product packages as well as easy to purchase technologies for many proactive companies, thereby making it easier for them to create better ergonomic workplaces at home. In today's Wall Street Journal, an article states, with millions of Americans now working from home, many are finding that they haven't nailed the basics, ergonomically speaking. They're slumping on the couches with laptops, then slumping again to watch TV. They're sitting on beds, neck strained and staring straight down at their cell phones. Um, many have ignored widely available tip sheets on how to set up ergonomic workstations at home. The result, weeks of poor posture have led to back aches, neck pain, and headaches. The article goes on uh, in speaking with one lady. At home, she knows that her laptop screen should be placed higher and that she should use a detachable keyboard. But has she changed her workspace? That's the $64 million question. And she said, you think that since I consider myself somewhat intelligent, the answer should be yes. While she was stretching more often in the morning before work, she hadn't yet brought, bought that new keyboard tray or keyboard. We get it, but do we, but do we really get it? During this webinar, if you have any questions that arise, please feel free to ask those on the Q&A tab that's on the webinar menu or feel free to email them to me. All questions will be uh, compiled and answered by Tim and then sent back to all of us attending this presentation. Also, this presentation is being recorded and will be made available to each of you. Our featured guest and speaker today is Tim Potterf from QP3 Systems. Tim is an ergonomist, inventor, speaker, author, and entrepreneur with nearly 30 years of ergonomic experience across the world. During this time, he has worked with thousands of leading companies across all business sectors by conducting on-site ergonomic assessments at manufacturing, processing, and hospitality client locations. From 2014 to 2016, he led the ergonomics effort for the $450 million award-winning Zurich North America headquarters building in Schaumburg, Illinois, outside of Chicago. 
Tim possesses both a bachelor's of science and a master's of science degrees in, in industrial engineering. He is a certified industrial ergonomist and has earned the uh, associate in risk management uh, designation, which is the ARM. So without further ado, I present uh, Tim Potter. Thank you, Mike. I will share screen and we will bring up our uh, presentation. And thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Um, hope you're all doing well. And um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you so much for the, the nice introduction. I appreciate it. We will keep keep rolling. One of the things that I, I don't think Mike mentioned, I've been working from home since 1994. So I have a little bit of experience in that regard. Um, tens of thousands of ergonomics assessments per completed on a global basis and actually started doing video assessments in the early, early 2000s. Um, right now I'm founder owner of QP3 Ergo Systems. And why don't we go ahead and just launch in to work from home. And this is one of the uh, work from home employees, probably most horrible nightmares of having while working from home. You may not hear the audio, but the video is going to tell a good story. <laughs> He's actually discussing a global challenge with North Carolina. And here, number two comes in. Now reinforcements. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is probably everybody's work from home, absolute worst nightmare. And, and that's, that's the nature of what we're experiencing right now is that we don't always know what's going to go happen tomorrow let alone next week. And when we talk about the ergonomics work at home, we're going to talk a little bit about illnesses and injuries. Uh, talk about seated work, you know, good ergonomics with keyboard and mouse monitors, the, the basics of ergonomics. And good workstation design does not stop when you leave that office, that bricks and mortar office that you might have used to go to every day. It, good workplace ergonomics is also important in that home office environment. We'll discuss handheld technologies and the fun parts about kids, pets, general safety, some guidance on how to work from home, and we'll look at some, some examples of equipment, accessories, and assessments. And as, as Mike mentioned very well, um, separate keyboard and also separate mouse are critical for use at a good home workstation. I'll, I'll use, you know, now the question is, how are you doing? And when I ask this question, working from home is fun at first. But after a while, the challenge is things, things get in the way. You know, you're, you may not have a dedicated office space, may be difficult. Um, you may have kids, pets, other distractions, other things happening. And so we'll talk a little bit about what's working, what's not working. We'll go through some examples. We'll talk about good positioning and also talk about ways to work around things. When we talk about soft tissue illnesses and injuries, the ergonomics related cases run about 40% of lost time cases, about 40% of lost time cost, injury costs from a workers' compensation standpoint. In the state of California, um, Psychosocial issues are actually compensable. We'll talk about those a little bit more. And I get this question very frequently. Um, again, since I've been a work from home person since 1994, um, they've always been work related. And COVID 19 does not change the fact that work from home cases are work related. Now, when we look at injuries and illnesses, especially soft tissue cases, you know, they affect the soft tissues, the tendons, the ligaments, the muscles, the nerves of the body. These are the soft tissues. And it's not going to happen instantaneously. Like, for example, I slice an apple and the knife slips and I cut my hand and I start bleeding at, a, at three o'clock on Thursday afternoon, May 14th, 2020. Soft tissue cases happen over time, over weeks and months. And the best analogy I've been able to come up with is that of a credit card where a person charges, charges, charges a little bit here, a little bit there, not like, not like it's a big ticket item, and they pay only the monthly uh, minimum every every every, pay, every uh, billing cycle. And then what will happen, so they keep billing, 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 and charging, charge, charge, because you're not, you're not paying off the whole balance, then at some point, a person's going to 
reach that maximum credit limit. And the body is like that too. When our soft tissues reach that maximum limit, if you will, then something's going to come happen. For example, we may have a difficult time with our shoulders. They may be uncomfortable. Our low back may be uncomfortable because we're not sitting correctly at our workstation. Maybe our neck is sore because we have the monitor too high or too low, or maybe a document's in the wrong place. We'll be talking about a lot of those ways, to, a lot of ways to address those issues as we go through the session. Now, psychosocial issues are from internalized stress. When people internalize stress, they get tense, their muscles tighten up, and it actually increases the risk for injuries. Now, psychosocial issues can arise from having, say, too much work and not enough time to do it. Maybe there, there's a hostile workplace, a hostile manager. That happens. It's not good, but it happens. There might be too much external stress, something going on outside that, that we think, oh, gee, I can't control this. What am I going to do? And, and it affects how we how we, um, how we feel, interpersonal issues. Maybe we have an argument with a coworker or a family member or somebody else. Maybe there's domestic abuse. That, that is not good. Um, we'll talk about some things people can do in, in the next slide. Also, too much information. Right now, we are getting bombarded from 24-hour news cycles here. They're yonder. We can't pick up a newspaper. We can't look at, a, at anything and not see something about what's going on in the world. And that stresses people out. Now, also inadequate sleep. We have to get enough sleep. It's important to get, for most adults, to get seven to eight hours. Some people may need a little bit more. Some folks may need a little bit less. We have to schedule and get the sleep. Even though we're working from home, I've seen articles in recent weeks that our are, are, days have shifted about an hour or so later than normal. And we need, but again, we need to make sure we're getting adequate sleep. Now, to address psychosocial issues, we're going to try to control what we can. First off is try to limit the amount and frequency of information that's coming in. Turn off the television, turn off the radio, get away from social media, shut it down, control that info. Uh, negotiate workload. For example, if you have a lot of work to do, now, maybe you can work with a manager or a supervisor to actually negotiate that workload and figure out what is more important. So set some priorities on those. The next piece is to reach out to human resources. If you are in a hostile work environment, then make sure to um, get help. HR or trusted advisor. Also, if you have issue, interpersonal issues or there's risk for abuse at home, find help, get shelter, get away from the situation. Do what you can, again, to address external stress and try to let go of the things you cannot control. Um, best analogy, um, I can think about that, and, and best attribution is to St. Luke is remember the past, plan for the future, but live for today. Yeah, something to think about. Remember the past. That's yesterday. Plan for the future tomorrow, but live for today. What do we need to accomplish today? Now, one of the things I see frequently, and we'll get into to the meat and potatoes of the workstation setup, is making sure if somebody has the right size chair. In my thousands and thousands of assessments, both, you know, I've done industrial work and office work. One of the biggest challenges with I see with chairs and seating is that the chair is a good chair, but it's not sized right for the person using the chair. Usually it's a large chair for a small person, and that's not that's going to cause problems. Um, recently, I was at a client and I was working with a fellow and he says, oh, my chair just doesn't fit right. And he was about 6'3", 200 pounds, worked out athlete, sitting in a chair built for a small and petite person. That didn't work either. So we need to make sure we have the right size chair for our body. Um, we want to make sure our feet are supported um, by the floor or footrest. If our feet are not supported, then we tend to put our feet on the rungs of the chair. We'll talk about that a little bit and show some examples. And that's going to affect a person's, person's uh, seated posture. We want the thighs parallel to the floor, knees about 90 degrees. Again, nothing I'm saying here is any different than what I would say to somebody who works in a regular slash traditional office. We want the shoulders relaxed, elbows about 90 degrees, close to the body, wrist straight, back slightly reclined in the chair. Again, I'm not saying anything that Anybody hasn't heard before if they've gone through a good ergonomics awareness course for offices. Now, 
for chairs, we want five good legs for stability. And in home hospice environments, we see lots of different situations, but we have to have five good legs. Otherwise, the chair is going to be more at risk for tipping than a person can, can experience an injury, illness, or even worse than that. <clears throat> the seat pan and backrest should be independent. It gives a lot more flexibility. It lets you recline, lets you adjust <clears throat> and increase that angle between the torso and the thighs. You need the right casters for the floor surface. You need a harder uh, carpet style caster. For carpeted surfaces, you need a softer caster that if a chair is going to be placed on a hard floor surface like tile or wood or something like that. So again, the right casters are critical for the floor surface. Now, we want to adjust a good adjustable padded chair. We want to sit back into the chair. And Mike, if you could turn the video share on, please, I would appreciate it. I am doing my best. I'm not sure. Okay. If not, I will, I will discuss what needs to be done. But when we sit, we want to have our body all the way back into the chair. If we're not sitting back into the chair, the best analogy I have is a two-week vacation where the seat pan is the first week and the seat back is the second week. And if we lean forward in the chair, we're getting good use out of that first week of vacation or that seat pan. But if, if we're not used sitting back in the chair, it's like we go home after that first week and we lose that second week of vacation. We're not getting the benefit from that backrest of the chair. And a good rule of thumb is, and a good way to sit back into your chair is when you sit is to, before you sit, you stand up, but you sit with your back to the chair, you grab the armrests with each hand, and then you make sure your bottom is far enough back to glide down the backrest of the chair. And what that does is sort of fits you into the chair, sort of like a glove. And that's where you have good support for your spine. I just did that demonstration myself. It feels a lot better. I have a lot more support. We want the elbows to be lightly supported by the um, armrest, and we don't want the um, armrest to be too high because then our shoulder is pushed upward. That's an awkward position. If it's, the armrest is too low, our shoulders are down. Again, our back is twisted. Our shoulders are twisted. That's not good. We don't want folks to reach for the keyboard and mouse. We want to bring things to us. And in a situation such as in the photo where a person is actually hunching forward, leaning toward, I say, well, don't work for the mouse. The mouse and keyboard should work for you. So bring those items closer. And we'll go through some workarounds, very simple, very inexpensive that you can do to help, help with that issue. Also, move the monitor closer. If you hunch forward to see the monitor, then maybe you need to bring it closer, maybe a vision check. When that's when that's possible, when the, when that comes around again, try to avoid the kitchen chair. Um, that's one of the worst things you can really sit on if you have to do that. Um, you know, wrap a blanket around it, put, put a pillow. But there are a lot of good and inexpensive name brand chairs out there that um, that are available, and we'll talk about chairs and seating a little bit more. For again, don't. Hunch forward, we talked about it, but it affects the neck, the upper spine, the lower spine. You see, sort of see the shoulders roll forward. Um, it actually also affects respiration. If we're hunched forward, then our internal organs are not where they're supposed to be in our, in our, in our belly. They're, they're punched and hooch forward, punch forward, and it, it reduces the amount of oxygen that actually our lungs can process and reduces the amount of oxygen going to our brain. Also affects di digestion because, again, our stomach's being constricted, we're punched forward digestion is not as good. And frankly, if I look, lean forward in my chair and my belly's pushed out, it makes me look about 25 pounds heavier. So if I sit back in my chair and recline a little bit, which is an optimal posture, hey, it takes 20 pounds off me. It like, makes me look a lot better. So, <laughs> um, so that's, it's a, it seems funny, but it's a good way to, to think about it. Now, we need good leg room on the desk, adequate depth. Um, and at a width about 30 inches should suffice. And we don't want the height to be too high or too low. We want to work at about elbow height. So shoulders relaxed, elbows about 90 degrees rest straight. That's where we want the keyboard at about elbow height in the mouse. You see in this photo, I don't know how this poor individual had the range of motion in his lower extremities to do this, but his um, thighs were about at about a, a 45 degree angle. And then the 
the, 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 let the feet are literally about another nine degrees beyond where they should be. So the person has an incredible range of motion. They were, they were having problems. So again, we have to have adequate clearance for the desk surface. Um, simple use, keyboard mouse use, again, from home office, shoulders relax, elbows about nine degrees, wrist straight. Um, and one of the things I, I recommend, and I tell folks, if you remember nothing else this afternoon is that wrinkles are bad. And I'm not talking about the wrinkles from wisdom and experience, but rather I'm talking about the wrinkles from awkward work postures, from bent wrist, if the wrist is bent to the right, you can see wrinkles to, to for example, on your right hand, you'll, you're going to see wrinkles on your the right side of your wrist. If you bend the right hand to the left, you can sort of see wrinkles on the thumb side. If I bend my wrist up, I can see wrinkles on the top of my palm and down, etc. And those are wrinkles. Those awkward postures actually damage the tendons that run through the carpal tunnel. That can affect issue, nerves, as you know, and then, then that's bad. So wrinkles are bad if you remember nothing else. Now, this is an interesting shot where a person has her document over on the on the desk so she'd bend her neck down but she also has a keyboard too far away and she's got full extension on her arms and shoulders so she's reaching out for the mouse and keyboard you now and she's also bending her neck so just not a good setup so simple fix you can do this anywhere is take a three ring binder and put that behind the keyboard and move the keyboard closer and put that in front of the monitor and place the um document on that binder and that's a really good quick fix but again you have to have that separate keyboard that separate mouse to be able to do that to reduce that hunching forward or that reaching and again this is a real simple fix again straight wrist position when using the mouse and the best way is to use a full forearm motion now, some folks use a trackball but again we want to keep the wrist straight and use a full forearm motion for lighting a glare um, we want screens at right angles to windows and this is a situation I had on the upper left last fall when my office flooded and I had to move everything on a short notice. And so I set it up so my laptop screen at a right angle to the window. I pulled the blinds. I moved the, so that the computer was to the side, was just to the left of the overhead light fixture. And this actually worked pretty well on a temporary basis. Um, the workstation on the lower right, again, this is a home office. It's one of the most, this whole project is one of the most challenging um, situations I've worked at from both their bricks and mortar downtown office to the home office. Uh, but they're facing the window, so there's got, going to be a lot of glare coming into the eyes. There's not a lot of space to work. Um, they're working with this laptop. And it's just not a good surface. Oh, and they're everything's set on a glass, like a, a plate of glass, of uh, desktop glass. And, and it looks nice, but it just does not work from a good ergonomic standpoint, a good er ergonomics aesthetic. Top of the screen should be about eye level, whether you're sitting or standing. You want things aligned with the, uh, the, key, the monitor aligned with the keyboard and mouse. And if you have two monitors, and some people still work from home stations, use a second monitor, use the monitor, place the monitor, use more on the side of your stronger eye. So if your eye, right eye is stronger and you use the, one of the monitors more, make sure the monitor you use the most is on the side of that stronger or dominant eye. Um, folks like me w wear bifocals or progressive lenses. Uh, you're going to look at the lower portion of your lens. And what I see frequently is people in this situation actually raise the monitor too high, they tip their head back, and they wonder why their neck hurts. For a person wearing bifocals and progressive lenses, you got to put the monitor on the desk, lower to the desk surface. I use a, large, a widescreen uh, laptop, and I have it on the desk surface, but I have a separate keyboard mouse tray with um, uh, key, a separate, separate independent mouse that I use, again, I achieve a pretty darn good workstation posture, and it works for me because I've figured out how to get the, the monitor at the place I need it to be. Now, this is an example of how not to use a laptop. And a lot of work from home people, there are also adults, there's also a lot of school from home kids. And just because you got a kid working on school work at home doesn't mean that they don't need the right setup as well. So you got to give them that second keyboard, that separate keyboard, separate mouse if possible, and get, get their posture um, organized as well. Um, again, uh, Mike mentioned people working in beds. Um, my son's middle school sent a 
an email out not too long ago saying they expected the kids to be at a desk or other surface and not in pajamas to, to do their work. We want to look somewhat professional. We want to dress for school. We want to be dressed for work. Now, there are a lot of different setups here. The, the workstation on the left was a high ticket item um, and towards the middle or end of March. Um, <laughs> but it, they, they it accomplished what they needed to accomplish. As far as leg room, maybe an, and foot space, maybe an issue. Short term, it got the, got the job done. The situation on the right, um, there's foot clearance if the person's able to stand. The challenge though, there's probably not going to be adequate um, knee space, and that's really not an optimal chair. It's got some padding on the on the seat pan, which is okay, but that's not the kind of chair. That's not a good setup for for more than doing a bill, you know, paying bills here and there. That's not what we want to be sitting at for an extended period. Now, laptop computers are going to be stressful if used oh, by themselves. Centers for Disease Control for years has said that. Laptop computers should not be used as a primary computing device. We want to have a separate keyboard and mouse. And I've got a couple of versions of my work, photos of my workstation that I have set up on the upper two photos. The one on the left shows where I have it normally for my, um, I have a keyboard tray, separate mouse. I've got the monitor a little bit lower. That works for me. But, you know, there's also options where if you have regular vision or use a straight gla eyeglasses lenses, you can actually use um, something to, to raise your monitor screen. Uh, some people will use reams of paper, you know, boxes. Um, a fellow I know MacGyvered a couple pieces of, of cardboard and turned, developed his own laptop riser. So lots of different things. But we want to achieve optimal work postures. Again, it doesn't matter whether a regular office or home office. Now, the photo on the lower left, I mean, if you've got a fluffy pet that's willing to work with you on that as long as you can achieve decent posture fine but that's probably not going to be a good long-term solution the sofa picture on the lower right again um okay for a short period and one of the good rule, rules of thumb i tell folks is try it when you're, we're doing anything whether it's in an office situation or whether it's in manufacturing you want to try to align your ear your shoulder and your hips if your ear shoulder and hips are lined up your back is probably in pretty good alignment but the other issue in this is they need to move the, the ottoman out of the way, drop the knees, let some of the circulation, because this is actually not good for circulation. Sit-stand workstations have the same principles. Shoulders should be lax, elbows about 90 degrees and close to the body, wrist straight. Um, upper left is a more traditional setup for a sit-stand um, option, but... The bottom one is one of the best sit-stand workarounds I've seen outside the ironing board. Uh, again, the challenge here is, is leg room. You really don't have a good power supply. Again, that's there's a little bit of tongue in cheek, but again, we want to alternate postures frequently. Our bodies are not meant to sit all the time. We're not meant to stand all the time. What we get the gain is from the from the um, <clears throat> transition from sitting to standing, standing to sitting. Generally, we recommend. Um, trying to stand, you know, 10, 15 minutes at a time. We don't want to stand three hours at a time. We're going to get uncomfortable. Our lower back's going to bother us. And the rule of thumb I tell folks is if you, if you step away from a standing workstation to get a drink of water, sit standing workstation, then bring it, if you've been sitting, then bring it up to a standing position. If, and then now uh, you come back, you stand for a bit and you sit back down. Then if you go to lunch, do the same thing. Leave it, you, you raise it up in the standing position so then when you come back, you start standing, and then you sit down a little bit later. Again, that sort of is a little trick to use to take advantage of the standing options. Now, this is an interesting case study. Um, it wasn't able, they weren't able to <clears throat> do anything about the chair, but she's hunched forward, and if you look at the middle photo, she put her feet on the rungs of the chair. That's a really good sign that the chair's too high or they don't have enough support for the feet. And it's going to tip the body forward. You're not going to have support. There's just a whole lot of stuff going on with the body in that case. So all I did was put something under her feet, and it tipped her back in the chair and gave her a lot, a lot better support. It's not a perfect chair. Again, we want a chair that's going to have some flexibility, some adjustability. We want the seat pan and the seat back independent in, with some good adjustments. Um, <clears throat> but this is better than nothing. I, I now, can 
in, in, Pardon? I was just going to say I can introduce you to a perfect chair um, if, if you needed one. <laughs> yep. All right. This is this is here's some examples. I love taking pictures of homemade workarounds, and you know sometimes a chair or something gets old. I've seen like, you, know, you take rubber bands or a string and wrap some cloth and tie some soft cloth around the armrest. Um, three ring binder makes an amazing temporary foot rest. Again, it's a good way to, um, to test. And it's one of the things I do when I work, work with clients is testing out temporary this, temporary that, just to figure out if they need a product or not. Cause I don't want people to have to buy something that they may not need. Um, that may not work. Let's do something temporary. Now, <clears throat> the photo on the right shows my temporary workstation uh, for about a, six weeks last fall while we while the office was fixed. And what I've done is I've put a chair and blocked everything off of the chair, but I've also used some banker boxes and cardboard boxes as temporary files. It worked. Again, temporary arrangement. Not. I don't recommend this. Uh, this is my nice six-year-old uncle, and he has Parkinson's, has issues with his hands, wrists, and with handheld technology, not only is there stress on the hands, wrists, but also a lot of other issues. We're seeing spinal deformities in adolescents. We're seeing, seeing speech delays in kids. But as far as the hands and wrists limiting the stress, that's where he was having problems. So my sister and I uh, went went in together, and we got him a um, an articulating. Uh, tablet stand that sits on the sits on the floor is an articulating arm he loves it he he can do um a lot of stuff with it we're planning a family zoom meeting this weekend so again we want short messages alternate fingers uh use it in portrait orientation which is which is the um like a like a piece of paper in the, in the portrait mode and then uh you, you know again the smart devices are really useful um with kids, pets, general safety, it's great for folks working from home to have their pets around them. Um, I used to have a cat that would sit on my chest during conference calls and, and run her motor. Um, I've got a Labrador retriever who loves to sit under my desk. You see him here. That does not bode well for good workstation posture because I can't get close enough even with a tray. So what I have to do sometimes is um, ask him to move to his designated spot. He's really not happy. But again, we got to think about how we're working. Um, another use of the chair that's been helpful is to eliminate trip hazards. I, again, the, I've got the wires and cables on the right side of the, of the table there, and the chair prevents access for people from inadvertently tripping on those. Also, make sure don't overload household circuits. Um, I was just reading something on LinkedIn today where somebody had their spouse work on doing some electro electrical work in the house. And they found out that the electrical, um, that the lights in the room were on two different circuits and they didn't realize that until they um, were doing some before that they, they found it just in the nick of time. So be careful when dealing with electrics, um, use grounded extension cords and power strips with surge protectors and limit pet and child access to cables, wires and cords. And there's a, there's a, the, uh, classic holiday movie that um, shows what can happen if the wrong, if a pet gets hold of wire or cable or cord. Uh, things to avoid ball chairs, treadmill workstations. Uh, ball chairs are best used as, for people who are trying to recover core strength after an athletic related injury illness. Treadmills need to stay in the gym. Um, a few years ago, I saw a client at a client. I saw somebody, she was on a conference call and she had a treadmill workstation going. She was trying to focus on stuff on the laptop, but she was all. But then she couldn't focus on too everything, so she had her feet on the outside edges of the treadmill. So her her legs are spread out, trying to focus on the and talk on the call, yet also do stuff on the laptop. That just does not work. The human brain can process only so many pieces of information at once. Kid and pay access, hide the tape. Um, <clears throat> years ago, I'll tell a personal story. My my eldest was a kindergarten. He had one of his buddies over, and they decided to take the tape out of my office and tape all of his thin board books onto the wall of his room. Now it was great, given great access to his books, but it played havoc with the paint on the walls when we finally took them off. Uh, hiding the scissors, keeping scissors out of reach, also. Uh, you know, you don't run with scissors, but don't let small children play with scissors. 
keep the electric stapler out of range as well. Um, they, they can't, if it's not um, set properly, they can, a small child can actually get their hand, finger stapled through. So again, make sure the stapler's out of reach. Uh, keep paper out of reach more from a mess standpoint. At one time, uh, my niece came to visit and took a whole room of paper spread out. Again, just keep things out of, out of the reach of children. Uh, same thing with protecting wire, wires and cables. Keep them out of reach. Block them off as best you can. Now, here we'll talk a little bit about working from home and some of the, some of the tricks and techniques I've learned over the years, some furniture and accessory pictures, and talk about a few things. But uh, find a dedicated space if at all possible. Um, you know, I, I've, I've seen that if, if work from home becomes as routine as it has been the last few months, we may see uh, people looking at houses that actually have dedicated spaces. Set a schedule. If you're normally an eight to five person at the regular office, try to keep that eight to five schedule from work at home. Um, the good news is may, the commute may, commute may be a little bit shorter. Do your same thing. Write a daily to-do list. Set priorities. Get away from your desk. Don't eat lunch at it. Take breaks. Um, get away. Stretch. Take a walk. Take a hike. Um, with an active uh, Labrador retriever, I often will take him on an afternoon hike. It wakes me up a little bit, gets me exercise, fresh air, and that's some of the best things. One of the best things I can do. Prop your documents up. Tip them forward so you can see um, see what's going on without tipping your neck. Um, I've used a document holder. I've got a prop for my iPad when you use on my tablet. And try to avoid distractions from other screens. You can see the iPad is off in this picture. Again, there are lots of great furniture options out there. Um, there are regular desks, sit-stand desks, articulating monitor arms. You know, and and I know some great folks who, who can find you some good deals on that. Um, I use a separate mouse. I use a separate keyboard. There are a couple different mice out there. That, and what I use is a gliding palm support for my mouse. It helps, but there are also other other products and accessories out there. And, and the key is, but the two the two products that I I use a separate mouse, separate keyboard. Those those are the things. And then and also a good chair. You got to have a good chair. Um, I a lot of people say, well, I'll go to the big box chair store and I'll I'll order. Uh, I'll get one of those. Um, I'll get a chair and it's, you know, 100 bucks, 150 bucks. Those are what we call two-hour chairs. And the two-hour chairs are really only meant to be sat in two hours at most in a day. And what we want to do is get a good name brand chair with a good um, warranty, good reputation. They'll stand behind, some people stand behind their chairs. And, and this is a group that, that I've worked with. Um, they provide... Um, speech therapy to at-risk kids here in the Chicago area. And actually, I, gave, I was able to give the webinar to their tell now tell us that they're therapists a few weeks ago because they have to do, they're still doing therapy for their, for the kids that they work with. And um, they're having, starting to have some problems and they had some really good, good success after this webinar. So thank you so very much. Um, and uh, Mike, what questions do we have? Um, as far as questions, there was um, I, I was emailed some questions prior to mm -hmm. the, to the webinar starting, and then mm -hmm. there was a question that came in over the uh, chat from Patty Rankin. It says, "What about using an exercise ball for chair? Or exercise ball for a chair?" Uh -huh. And you kind of covered that, but yeah, give a little more insight. I, my my uh, experience with the exercise ball comes from an episode of The Office when the guy shows up with the ball and the other one comes up and stabs it with the uh, pair of scissors. So, um, <laughs> I, I didn't see the episode. I suppose Dwight was the one with the scissors. Yeah. Um, I would, again, the, th the ball is the therapeutic ball designed for therapeutic use for people who have experienced usually a core body injury as a result, usually some sort of athletic activity we don't recommend those there's there, you don't you just don't have the support for the back because um, all the way the upper body is now going to be supported on the lower back mm -hmm. the reason we want a chair that has a backrest and we can lean sit back into that chair is the backrest is going to take about two-thirds of the upper body weight off our lower back and the chair is going to absorb that so if we have if everything if we're on the exercise ball, it's going to limit us, and our, we're going to be tense. Our muscles are going to be a lot more tense, and as we get less circulation to our body, we get less respiration, a little bit less respiration because we're tense because we don't want to fall fall off that ball. We got we want to use good 
principles, good practices. And again, um, it, if, if a therapist or a physician has prescribed that, um, I'm not going to argue with that prescribing physician, but I've yet to come across a situation where it has something like that has been prescribed for several hours a day. Um, I go, I speak at various ergonomics conferences and safety conferences. And I always, I always like to pick the brains of the, of the smart people in the room. And I've yet to talk to an ergonomist or a researcher in the field who says the exercise balls are a good thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there's another question that comes in. It says, if an accident or injury occurs at home while working, is my mm -hmm. employer responsible? I guess that might go back to your, your days. Yes. Or something. Yes. If, if, a per if I'm working at home and I, I say I, I have a, uh, carpal tunnel syndrome from typing or I trip and fall over the cords and cables from my at my home desk because my of my computer keyboard so absolutely it is work related I worked for um, a large insurance carrier for 22 and a half years before founding my own company and I did I did a, I did a lot of work from home assessments then I've done work from home do a lot of work from home assessments now but yes it's work related and it's compensable okay uh, there's a Rhonda Reed asked a question. How do you manage? Uh, it says cubital. I'm uh, I'm I'm not sure cubital. if it's cubital, cubital tunnel issue or carpal tunnel issue. Pinky and ring finger tingling. Ooh. First off, I mean, see, so talk to the doctor, see what's going on. My background's engineering. I'm, and so the that thing is first off, see what the doctor says, and is it look at see if there's anything going on with the with the workstation. I mean, is there is there contact stress on the on part on the nerves um, from the ed, from the corners or edge of the desk? Again, without understanding a situation and knowing more, I'm, I you know that's really difficult to to address. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I had a call this morning. A person said, Hey, my, uh, uh, my ring finger and my thumb hurt on my, on the mousing side. And I said, well, quit grabbing the mouse so tight. So mm -hmm. that could be, and depends on what buttons are using for the mouse. too. Exactly. Uh, and I, I encouraged them to switch the mouse to the left side and see if the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the stress moves mm -hmm. from the right to the left. And, mm -hmm. and there's a number of different things that you can, uh, um, go. Um, right. Rhonda, Rhonda just followed back up. She said, what is causing that pinky and ring? And, and like you said, you're, you'd have to see a picture or you'd have to see, uh, mm -hmm. see uh, a video or something. Of, of yeah. Home. Yeah. And that's where when, with work from home, um, we, we sometimes will do on site with a third party president, or we're also doing video. We also do video assessments of folks to, to see what the situation is, mm -hmm. because again, that's, I mean, that's, I, 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 we can't really work blindly. And, and a lot of times I'll do an office assessment and somebody will say, Hey, so-and-so's not here, but could you look at their desk? And I said, I'm happy to look at the desk. However, I need a body <laughs> <laughs> to, to be, to be, to be, you know, I, I the body's what's aching. If they're not there, it's hard to, uh, yep. to determine that. Definitely. Barb, Barb Pitson says, do you find that people who lower their monitors because of bifocals have other neck problems from lowering the monitors? Well, it depends. Okay. Here's, here's my experience is I looked through my, Short vision is through the lower portion of my lens, lenses. So if I have, so if I have, so I'm looking through the lower portion of my lenses and I lowered my monitor. Um, now I'm not lowering it like way low, but um, it's on the desk surface roughly. And I look through the lower portion of the lens. It works for me. Um, we just have, what we have to do is what I'll, I'll do with folks is I'll work with them and raise and lower the monitor to find out where where is a good distance? What's a good height? And then we aim for that. And that's where a, an adjustable height desk really comes in handy today. It gives a lot, lot, lot more um, flexibility and and a, and the ability to find a better uh, position for a person's monitor. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to probably botch the last name, but Renee Mag McGoffey, she says, is there a guidance document to refer to the 30 inch depth needed for desk. Quite a few desks are now available at 24 inch depths to accommodate multiple office occupants. 
So I guess her mm-hmm. question is, do you have any ergonomic guidance on which is better, a 30-inch depth or a 24-inch mm-hmm. depth? I mean, I'm, I've got wide elbows, and if we look at some of our standard office chairs, I'm just going to grab a, a tape measure. I wish we were on, if we were on video, but if I'm, on the chair I'm sitting uh, at... Yeah, I'm just saying, Go ahead and sit- stop, um, Tim, stop sharing your screen and then click okay. on start video. Okay, let's see. I'll stop share and we'll start video. Let's see where's the video. See if, that, see if that works for you. Okay, yeah. There we go. There we go. Hello, everybody. Hey, there's Tim. How's it going, everybody? It's <laughs> my, um, I mean, I'm going to tip the screen. I'm going to show the armrest of this chair. Now, if I'm going to... T- Okay, these armrests, okay, different, every chair is different. Like every person's a little bit different. If you look at this, this is a 27 inch. Can you see that? It's a 27 inch um, outside width. If I'm in a 24 inch workstation, then I'm, then I'm lose. then right now to get to 24 inches, I'm, a, I'm not only here, I'm only here. So 30 inches. Again, that's a bare. That's a yeah, bare minimum. I think she's referring to the depth of the work surface. From the depth of the work surface, about. I mean, okay, that's where it width. Okay, for depth, I mean, I've got a twenty-four inch desk. I've got a keyboard tray. Um, you know, I'm I'm fine with that. But the width, we got to have enough adequate width. Um, I can't really. My desk is a mess. I'm not going to show it to you right now. But um, but yeah, for your depth. For the depth, you know, like front to back, uh, 24 inches, that's what I'm working with. Um, and I've got plenty of space. Again, it depends on what a person's using. If a d- desk is too deep, if it's too far away, then people tend to move their monitors farther away and then they tend to lean forward in their chair. And that's a problem. That could be a problem. All right. Patricia Stepp, it looks like there's a couple of questions. One of them, she said, there was mention of a good chair recommendation. Can you provide that name of the chair? And uh, well, I'll I let you take care of that one. <laughs> <laughs> Body built seating is uh, is is phenomenal. Uh, we manufacture all different si- types and sizes of chairs for different users. There's a, um, uh, I mean, you, the best thing to do is go to bodybuilt.com mm-hmm. and and view your um, view the chairs that are there. And mm-hmm. uh, Patricia, I would be more than happy to put you in touch with with your local person, and they could actually bring over a sample for you to try out. Mm-hmm. Um, Patricia no. also asked another question: What is a good length of time to use the stand up desk? What is the best alternating schedule for sitting versus standing? Mm-hmm. Um, I okay. I have a guide here. And it's one of our guides. Um, generally, for standing desks, I will say you know ten to fifteen minutes, or fifteen to minute, twenty minutes per hour. Um, now, one want to and to go back to the um, let's see, to go back to the um, question earlier about the the de- depth the depth, not the width of the desk. You know, it also depends on the size of the monitor and mo- multiple monitors. If you have two. 20 inch monitors on your desk, you're going to need to be farther back. You're going to need more depth. But the challenge is you don't want to use that depth then to lean forward. You want, you have to be right. farther back. Right. And so that's, that's going to play a role. I've seen people with, you know, arrays of multiple, like three to nine monitors set up and that's in a, like a security or trade right. and security and trading options. So lots of, lots of great questions. Again, yeah. 15 to 20 minutes for standing uh, duration. And you don't have to sp- spend 15 or 20 minutes at a time. You know, five minutes here, 10 minutes there is, is really good. Okay. And uh, sorry for botching up your name, Rene. She, she corrected me on that. So <laughs> uh, Michelle Fielder, uh, Fiddler, Fiddler, I'm not sure. I have to leave early for another meeting. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. That's just a comment. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. James Larson says, what are your thoughts on letting employees take ergonomic chairs from the office for home use? Um, if, you're, that, if your employer if, will let you, that's great. If, yes, if, you're, yeah, if your employer will let you, that's if, great. Um, that's that's you know, that's a be- that's a good option. Um, you know, employer may have the individual check them out. Um, you know, it's, it's also important. I think it's good for companies to provide guidance on equipment options for SIP, for work from home employees. Like, like here's a package. When I was uh, working for a corporation, they gave us a 
stipend, but they didn't say do this or do that. But we did when I when I started running that part of the project, we had a okay, here's a here's a set, here's a here's a chair for a small person, here's a chair for a regular sized person, here's a chair for a big and tall person, here's here's some desk options. Right. So people need guidance. They just they just don't know, hey, here go out and get this. Then they go out and they buy the really hot, nice looking big leather executive style chair, which has no adjustability and is built for somebody six, five two fifty. All right. Uh, Keith Osborne, uh, not really a question, but he was just uh, following up. Um, he said the depth of that desk really come into play with the larger monitors. And I yes. think you had mentioned that. Yeah. Um, here's a couple of other comments. Um, not necessarily questions, but one says body built air works best for most individuals. Somebody else says, body built is awesome. I don't mind reading these comments here. <laughs> uh, invest in a body built chair. You will not be disappointed. Um, you got some real fans there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let me just, um, I think this is a question. It says, I, I have a good desk set up with a, with a slide tray, but have to continually move my chair forward. I'm using a mm. Dell laptop, but I haven't thought about the separate keyboard. Any specific brand recommendations? And this comes from Diana Hickman Platt. And I'm assuming mm -hmm. she's asking for, you know, when you are going to utilize your laptop with an external mm -hmm. keyboard, what are your recommendations? And there's so <clears> many out there on the market. There's a bunch. Um, what I'd recommend is a keyboard with, if you don't use the 10 keypad, you get a get a what I call a compact keyboard without the ten keypads, a little bit more compact. Um, if you if you find you keep having to move your chair closer, one thing that that may be happening is what kind of floor surface is your chair on? Is it on a wood or tile floor surface, and are the wheels too too hard? And are you rolling back? The chair is rolling back. One of those really thin entryway type mats that you see at stores and stuff when you walk in, especially the winter months um, in the northern climates, that might be a good option to put the chair on that to keep it from rolling. So if it's rolling away, from, if it rolls away, because you keep having to move forward. But yeah, you know, a small compact keyboard, you know, Bach or Elkison has them, uh, Microsoft, Kensington, I think Kensington felt, just everybody out there, you could, you know, go on Amazon or somewhere and, and there's all kinds of product out there that, you know, and they're they're not really that expensive. You can get a good one for 40, 50 bucks. All right. Kim Gerber is asked, <laughs> what about a kneeling chair? Um <laughs> that's a lot of the same principles that we were discussing. I remember my parents had one of those back in the 80s. Yeah. And how many of those do we see today? Again, unless a doctor's prescribing something like that. The kneeling chair, I remember working in an undergraduate school as an as a student student worker and and one of the People I supported um, had one of those, and she was always, you know, doing the. But again, your knees are being uh, bent. Your knees are being bent in. You're not getting the circulation in knees. Again, all the weight of your upper body is now supported by your lower back. You're not even getting support for that upper body, so everything's on your lower right. back. My, if, um, if, restrictions if, of circulation. I don't recommend them unless right. the doctor says, "Oh, yeah, this is for you." Again, it, you, you want your next position, uh, or, you know, the best position the best is next your position. next one. And uh, I mean, so I mean, if you wanted to kneel down for a little while, that's great for probably five minutes. Yeah, uh, and get up. Um, uh, yeah, but, yeah, but you know, it's still it's it's not a good one for extended use. Right. Um, and so I, I I generally shy away from those again. And I don't know at this point if I could even get myself out of one of those chairs. Right. All right, no, another question. We, we've got uh, just a, a few more minutes. Mm -hmm. I have a Mac desktop with a fixed height stand. I wear progressive lenses and it is too high. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what to do other than take it off the stand and try to balance it against the wall. I have mm -hmm. not been able to find an adjustable stand for a Mac. My neck is bent backwards terribly. So she wears bifoc or progressive lenses. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. Macs are, are yeah. crazy when it comes to uh, trying to convert those to monitor arms, but it is available. Yeah. Um, so the, 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 the key is to get that Mac down lower, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or is it possible? I don't know if she's a seated position. Is it possible also potentially to raise the chair a bit and put something under the feet as a temporary option um, so you can figure something out with the actual 
monitor itself. Right. That was Christina. I'm just going to say Christina because okay. I think it's Akel, but I'm not 100% sure. You know, I, I once, I'll tell the story. I once had, and I'm not going to I would suggest this. I once had an administrative assistant that had such neck issues that they, and this is in the time of the CRT monitors. And if you have a CRT monitor, you need about, you know, a battleship or a aircraft carrier size deck to put those things right. on. But, uh, but anyway, she, we actually, they actually had, we actually had to cut a hole in her desk and mount the monitor that way. Uh-huh. Um, literally inside her desk. And that's, that's a lot of work. Um, that's a lot of effort. Yeah. Again, um, one uh, one of the uh, attendees says, "Have her try bifocal contact lenses. They are great." Yeah, and, that, and that's that's great if if it's possible to get into see a vision specialist right now. Um, you know, it's it's that's a, a lot of different ideas. Talk, you know, talk to your eye, eye doctor is a good option. Right. But again, short term, what what can we do today? Um, so you can raise up yourself in, in relationship to that monitor. Right. Um, I got another question. This one came mm-hmm. in in an email prior to the uh, uh, webinar starting. It says, what is the most challenging aspect from an ergonomic standpoint you've encountered thus far regarding working from home? One of the things I, I see is that, that, people just jump in and they're working from home and they, they throw out all the good sense they had when they um, came in from the office, came from the office. It's, it's again, that, that I think that's, that's the biggest challenge. Um, I showed you some of the, the work from some work from home pictures Um what I, I think the one of the biggest challenges I think folks have is a lot of people put their computers on a dining room table, and if we narrow it, narrowing it down a little bit, and that's just too high for a lot of people to work comfortably. So we need to ra- be able to raise our cha- ourselves up or our chairs up adequately to be able to work com- more comfortably. All right, and uh, here we'll we'll make this the final uh, question right. here. Uh, it just popped in from James Larson. Your thoughts on so-called ergonomic keyboard versus just the standard rectangular keyboard? Okay, um, that's a that's a great question. And by the ergonomic, I'm say like the angled ones. I'm I'm presuming um, a person with a, a wider body frame may benefit because remember we talked about trying to keep the wrist straight. If I come in to a keyboard and then I have to bend my wrist to access the keys to type, look at that. That's awkward. Again, I got wrinkles. Remember, wrinkles are bad. But if I could come in from an angle and the keyboard's angled too, then I my wrists are not nearly as bent. Right. I don't have those wrinkles. There's there's a lot of great companies that manufacture mm-hmm. those those angled keyboard trays, like you said. Um, you mentioned a, a few of them. Uh, mm-hmm. So, all right. I want to thank Tim for his knowledge, for his expertise, and um, uh, and for his his uh, willingness to to uh, share his presentation with with us, with you. And um, I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. Again, I just wanted to follow up. This uh, webinar was hosted uh, by Bodybuilt. Uh, you can go to bodybuilt.com. It was also hosted by Tim's company. Uh, QP3 Ergo Systems. You can go to his website, see a little bit more about what he does. Um, And uh, again, I thank you for your time and thank you for your participation. Thank you for your questions. I will get out. It'll probably be tomorrow uh, before the uh, the video is uh, is available, and uh, we will go from there. And I I appreciate everybody's time and, and willingness to participate. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.